Hi, I'm Jason Gorb for ThatShelf.com, and we're here to look at Roger Waters's new version of Dark Side of the Moon. Big change. Roger Waters, bass player, founding member, uh, yeah, founding member, Dark, uh, Pink Floyd, the Pink Floyd, um, iconoclastic musician, um, one of the main uh, voices of the band, left the band, took the um, all kinds of lawsuits, all kinds of nonsense. I mean, the history of Pink Floyd is actually a fascinating one. Um, started out as such with Sid Barrett's band. Um, very uh, soon, Sid uh, succumbed to um, some complexities in terms of his mental health and his um, stature within the band. Uh, David Gilmour came in, and then you basically had these sort of two competing and yet for some time complementary forces. And the apotheosis of that, especially with Rick Wright, who I think gets overlooked a lot during these um, uh, conversations about Dark Side of the Moon, given his compositional um, uh, uh, process and how much he actually contrib contributions uh, to this album. And Nick Mason's drum, I don't think Nick's the greatest drummer of all time, but he certainly was the right drummer for that band at that time, um, uh, came together with... Um, you know, one of the most beloved, most successful albums of all time. There have been many, many versions of Dark Side of the Moon, um, many live versions, some exceptional ones, um, by the band themselves, by solo artists, by Roger going off and doing um, uh, live versions all over the world. Um, I've seen songs performed by Roger with the solo stuff. I've seen it, um, the Delicate Sound of Thunder tour, um, Division Bell tour, um, uh, uh, to, to see how these songs can actually be replicated in a new and different environment. I have reggae versions, uh, or at least dub versions, dub side of the moon, there's one or two. Um, there's prog rock versions, there's jazz rock versions, there's all kinds of different ways of actually sort of diving in. In fact, one of the only times I've ever performed live with a band is I was actually asked to do money on tenor sax, and the one that they wanted was the live version, which actually has a different hook right in the middle, a sort of um, a pentatonic hook. Um, da -da 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 da 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 part right at the end, which was only ever on the live uh, recording. So from the very beginning, from my introduction to this record, the first time I ever bought it was to actually perform that thing live. I'd heard Floyd, I'd heard Money, the song that, you, that would play back on radio then, but I never really understood it as a concept, as a whole album, as, as what it did. And from that time, I have a gazillion different versions. Obviously, I have the MoFi, I have the new box set, which um, you can see on this channel. And now we have this. This is the Dark Side of the Moon Redux by Roger Waters. Um, Incredibly obnoxious, <laughs> uh, incredibly gratuitous, and yet, for me, still interesting. And we'll actually see how it actually plays out. I want to see what it looks like inside. And you can see, sort of, in here, whoops, whoa, whoa, here we are, there, ah! Yeah, you actually get the record artwork there. It's probably hard to see, but yeah, there's the reflection of it within the eye of this dog. Um, uh, yeah, so Speak to Me, Breathe on the Run Time, Great Gig in the Sky Money, Us and Them, any color you like, brain damage, and eclipse. It's on three sides of two records, one more than the original album. A lot of that, my understanding, I haven't listened to it yet, but a lot of that is him pontificating, blabbing, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, really nice um, uh, triangle sticker shininess here, which I will definitely keep. Um, cooking vinyl, yeah. So our friends at uh, a link to rogerwaters.com, and then... Uh, yeah, made in Germany, so the pressing hopefully is okay. Um, let's crack it open and see what we actually get inside, because this looks like a pretty gatefold, one would expect. Again, it's not as if um, Waters hasn't been uh, connected with some of the great album artworks of all time, often by Hypnosis. Shout out to the Hypnosis doc, which, while not the most amazing doc, uh, certainly does a good job of showing the stuff that they um, were really great at, namely creating good artwork. There's that triangle that we talked about. Here is the straight up shot of this. And that's how it sort of gatefolds that way. And on the inside, so we got two pyramids. Boop, boop, boop. And yeah, uh, the memories of man is old age or the deeds of man is prime. You shuffle the gloom of the sick room. Yeah, so all the lyrics here 
Um, the sun is eclipsed by the moon. I tell you one thing, Jerry, me old sucker, it's not all dark, is it? So yeah, full lyrics on the back, front to back, both pyramids articulating that. Um, the records themselves show up unsurprisingly in nice printed inners. Um, I would have loved polyline um, uh, sleeves much better. Uh, the opening text of the lyrics from the song Free For that appears on Secured by Class. Right, so it actually talks about some additional lyrics here. Um, Dark Side of the Moon, um, 50 years after the release of the original door recording Dark Side of the Moon, I realized that the fucking warmongers hadn't got the message the first time around. Well, when I'm recording that, that's probably true, although his views and his politics are, shall we say, naive is the wrong word. Uh, petulant might be a better word. Yeah, he has complex ideas. Um, sometimes um, they work, sometimes they don't, but sometimes they just sound like the ravings of an old man, which is perfect for an album like Dark Side of the Moon. So I look forward to reading his ramblings about this and listening to them. Um, again, one of those great things is that I can accept um, very much that his perspective might be complete lunacy, but he's got a perspective and he ingests it into his uh, albums with a great deal of passion. The record itself, there was just a tiny little hair that was floating, no doubt, um, from my cat wandering around here. But yeah, really nice, um, really nice presentation. Nice flat, black, um, nothing too extraordinary or extravagant there. And the second disc, because it's only three sides, I'm curious what we actually have here. Okay, so this is actually, this is the thing that I was actually interested in. I, I think a lot of this was his COVID band. Um, this lockdown band and also his um, touring band. So Roger Waters vocal bass on any color and VSC3. That is the synthy um, um, synthesizer that he used uh, in 1973. I mean, I will just simply rant that I came very close to having a synthy suitcase um, from my um, uh, um, uh, electroacoustic music department at the school that I went to, and I'm still. Bitter. I never actually got to actually own that synthesizer that is now worth a fortune. Guy Steifert on uh, bass guitar percussion key synths. Uh, Joey Rockner. Weronker. Yeah, I can never say his last name. Big deal. Last name. That on drums. Uh, Jonathan Wilson on guitars. Johnny Shepard on organ. Val Mardo on theremin. Asnif uh, Korjekian. Uh, sorry. Korkejian on vocals, etc. String arrangements. John Karen, John Karen actually shows up. That's interesting. Lap Steel, Synth Organ, Robert Walter, um, Record Mix at Sergeant Recorders and Mantis Studios. Interesting. Uh, East West Studios, Strong Room, Five Star Studios, and uh, produced by Gus Steifert and Roger Waters. So all of that located. Sorry for reading that so poorly there. But um, yeah, it's interesting who they all put that out as together. Um, yeah. So that's that, and there's all the information. And this being the last record, I don't know if there's an etching on the back of the fourth side, but we will see. It might just be blank. Um, so we have side three, Us and Them, Any Color You Like, Brain Damage Eclipse. And on side four, I got stuff. Looks like there's something on here. I have no idea what side four is. Side four might be talking spoken word. It might be something, but it looks like there's actually information that's etched in here. So I look forward to finding out what the hell it is. You guys probably all know, so you can make fun of me in the comments for not knowing anything. But like most things, I like to keep um, uh, it free from um, any spoilers as were. Again, it looks like there's information here. It certainly looks like there's something in the groove. So we'll see what side four actually uh, contains. But that, my friends, is a look at this guy. The weird ass version of Dark Side of the Moon 2023, we can call it. Um, why not? Let's let him keep doing it. Um, I like that he uh, continues to sort of explore his own stuff. There's certainly things that I would like to see them moving forward. Um, Amused to Death um, remains, I think, the apotheosis of um, uh, post-Floyd um, uh, musical output, but still there's a, a number of things that absolutely do. post of Hitchhiking is absolutely up there with uh, some of the best um, that he ever did with Floyd. Um, and so it's interesting that he's actually so overtly going back uh, to um, his roots, as it were, and redoing this similar to what he did with Live with the Wall, but this feels obviously very, very um, different, um, a complete sort of reimagining of what it is. I think in many ways, 
This is obviously not going to be definitive, but I still think it's an interesting contribution to the musical canon of the Pink Floyd adjacent stuff. For ThatShelf.com, I am Jason Gorber. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you um, enjoy. Please subscribe, follow us on social media, do all that stuff. Visit us at ThatShelf.com. It would really mean a lot, and we'll see you next video. All the best. Take care.